Okay, so mine is the world. We're going to create a world, and it's kind of my teaching philosophy. And so we're going to start with insights because I'm doing plants and animals, and plants are a little less complex than animals, and that's what I view my insights as. Is they're a little bit less complex. So my first one is a teacher should never stop learning. And I did a tree because trees never stop growing. They, they grow until they die. And I feel like teachers should really embrace that and learn until really they die, I guess. <laughs> Not to be morbid, but. And then I did bonding with students is extremely important in the classroom. And for that, I did um, common witch's hair. It's a lichen. And the Native Americans used to use this lichen, and they used to make clothes with it and bond um, different things like rope. They used to use it as rope, and so I figured that that's probably pretty good bonding. Next one is having the same procedure allows children to get into a routine and understand expectations. This one's kind of odd. It, it, I did death camas. And death camas, um, it affects everyone, plants and animals, in the same way. If you eat it, you die. <laughs> and so that's kind of what you should always have the same expectations for your students, no matter age or gender. They kind of all should be the same. And then I did grass. Teaching resilience is important um, in children, and grass is extremely resilient. It comes back after fires, unless you um, hurt the root, it's going to grow back, always. Then I did, students learn more when lectures are hands-on or made into fun activities, and I did salmonberry because it's not only, it not only produces fruit, it produces flowers, and so it kind of it's just not a green plant. It's very, it's very pretty and it's very tasty. And teaching with passion is the best way to teach. And I did a lily for this, and I thought that um, lilies are very pretty. And I think that passion can be a very beautiful thing in the classroom. And then, lastly, I did ivy. Learning at a young age is vital. Um, to education in the future, and I don't know about you guys, but when I graduated, they gave us um, ivy. It was, we went to ivy cutting, and basically it was kind of symbolic of, okay, this is your education now, and then you're supposed to pass it on and grow in the future, and that's kind of why I chose ivy for that. And then, now, strategies. Since they're a little bit more complex, a little bit more wordy, we have uh, birds and mammals. Okay, so I did prompts. When a student is having difficulty answering a question, the teacher can prompt or give the student a hint towards the answer. It's much better than giving the student the answer. It gives them a chance to try and figure it out for themselves. And for that, I did a bear. And bears, mother bears always try to teach their their cubs and they teach them until they are able to go off and be adult bears by themselves. And that's kind of, they were prompting their, their cubs into being ad adults. And then each one teach one, one student in the class is given a topic and then is expected to teach that to their group. And I thought of a wolf because wolves, they run in packs and each one has their own standing in the pack, like if you're an alpha or male or female, and then you have different kind of roles in the pack, and so that's what I kind of thought of. And then review of, of last class risk takers. Three people stand up and refresh the class and what they did on the week prior. This one's kind of a stretch, but I did an orca because they kind of run in pods, and so, I mean, if you are doing this, you're in a group, so you're in like your little pod and you're teaching everyone else what you've just learned. And then a specific time, give students a specific time to do a task and keeps, keeps them on task and focused. And I thought of a bird, 
because birds migrate and so they have an internal clock that tells them when to migrate and so they are very keen on what time on the time, time of year. And then no one knows what you're doing but you. When you forget what you planned, have students pair up and give them something to discuss until you remember what you forgot. I did an elephant because an elephant never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> And then I did bullseye and dance card. Put the student's name in the middle of the paper, pass the paper around to other students and have them place their name on the paper in relation to how well they know the student in the middle. Then make the students who aren't as familiar with each other do group activities together. And bullseye, I did a bull, well, obviously, because it's bullseye, so that one didn't really take a lot of thought. And then lastly, um, okay. Conflict resolution. Find a simple solution that kids can use to resolve conflict. For example, rock, paper, scissors. And I did kind of the king of the jungle. Well, depends on the jungle. But the Asian jungle, I guess. Um, I did a tiger because no one really messes with them and they have really good conflict solution. I mean, if you don't comply with their wants, they kill you. So. <laughs> or they eat you, whatever. So there you go. The conflict solution, I guess. But anyway, that's my little world, and so that's my teaching strategy. And like the plants and the animals here, it probably will continue to evolve. And so that's kind of that's it. So cool.